Okay, so we said that we can't use the constant acceleration equations to solve spring problems, right? Because f equals minus kx equals ma, right? So we cannot use the constant acceleration equation. So we're not going to use f equals ma to problem solve our spring problems. What we're going to use are energy equations. And how do we get an energy equation for a spring? Well, I have a derivation here for you, which you will not need to know the derivation for either our test or for the AP test. But again, understanding where the equations come from uh, I think gives us a better understanding of the equation and then a better ability to apply it. So what I have shown here is simply f equals minus kx graphed. So we have f equals minus kx, right? It's a linear function with a negative slope. x equals 0 is the f spring equals 0, spring equilibrium position. So that's the 0 for spring position. And in this example, we're pulling the spring to the right, stretching it, making it go from position 1 to position 2. And you can see that over here. So position 1, position 2. We'll get to the derivation on the right side in a moment. So we know we have a force that varies with position. So we have to use work equals integral f dx the force due to the spring is negative kx. dx is dx. We have a polynomial function, x to the first power. So we increase x squared on 2. When we evaluate it, final minus initial, we get the work done by a spring very quickly. See, so it's a very easy derivation. The work done by a spring is negative. That's where the negative here comes from. One half k x quantity, x final squared minus x initial squared. And you definitely want to memorize this. You don't want to have to go through the derivation again and again every time you want to use the equation. And you can just pick it up and use it. So the energy transferred, the work done by the spring, is the energy transferred to or from an object by a spring always, always, always equals negative one-half k quantity x final squared minus x initial squared. Uh, please uh, do not try to take the shortcut. Sometimes I'll have students just do x final minus x initial and then square the bracket. That is not the same mathematically. That doesn't work. Please don't do that. Okay. To problem solve, you are simply going to incorporate our new equation for the work done by a spring with the work kinetic energy theorem. And if the spring is the only force acting on the object, then it also equals the change in the kinetic energy of the object. And I would love for you to write down this double equality equation to problem solve every spring problem we are going to be solving. Now, the derivation on the right gets us to the same result, right? So, same thing. And it's just looking at uh, some geometry based on the fact that it's a linear force, right? Remember that the work also equals the area bounded by the function and that horizontal zero line. Well, since it's a linear function, we can just take the average force value. So that's the average force value. And do that as the height. So the base is delta x. And the height is force average. And that will give us the same exact result. So you don't need to to go through this in any type of detail. Some textbooks will have uh, this as the derivation rather than the calculus version. Um, so I just wanted you to be able to see that it does work out. We would, you have a little more algebra to do. You have to do a little bit of foil here. First, uh, inner, outer, last. So first, inner, outer, or last, and outer to be able to get your answer, but it does work out to be the same. All right.
then let's see how to apply this double equality work done by a spring equation incorporating the work kinetic energy theorem to be able to problem solve problems. So here we have an example of a three kilogram block sliding on a frictionless surface, moving at 10 meters per second <clears throat> when it hits the end of a spring that is just sitting there minding its own business. So it's not stretched, not compressed. That's the equilibrium position, x equals zero. It is going to compress the spring until it comes to a stop. And stop, of course, is, in this case, v final equals zero. So our v final here was zero because it's coming to a stop. V initial was 10 meters per second. We were given that in the problem. I used, utilized my double equality here. X final is what I'm looking for. How far is it compressed before it comes to a stop? The block hit the spring at position x equals zero. So again, voila, I have a very nice one equation, one unknown to solve. The negative and the negative would cancel out as well. My one halves go, my three goes. And I am left with a compression. Boy, it has to be a very long spring. It's a very long spring, a 10 meter spring. All right, so that would be the easiest of the spring problems to solve utilizing our work kinetic energy theorem. How about if they make it a little bit harder for us? What if they put friction into the problem? What if, in addition to the spring bringing it to a stop, so it's still going to stop? So when I look at the change in kinetic energy, I'm still going from 10 to stop. But now it's not just the work done by, by the spring. There's also friction that's going to drag against it. So now we have to go to kind of a, a begin, begin with the work kinetic energy theorem and say the network done on the block is going to equal the change in the kinetic energy. So we have both the spring doing work on the block and friction doing work on the block. Well, the work done by friction is over here. That's the force due to friction dot delta x. Friction is going to be acting to the left, bringing it, helping to bring it to a stop. It's still sliding to the right until it comes to a stop at x final. Uh, cosine of 180 gives us our negative out here. So this negative is from the cosine of 180. Uh, delta x is always final minus initial. Frictional force is mu times the force normal. x initial is zero in this problem. So that's why the x initial here is zero. x final is what we're looking to solve for. So negative mu mg x final is the work done by friction. So that's where I got this term from, negative mu mg x final. The work done by a spring, we just memorized. Negative one half k x final squared minus x initial squared. So that remains the same as the above example. x initial is 0, x final is what we're looking to solve for. Notice we are left with a quadratic to solve. So we have an x squared with the spring term, we have friction, and we have 1 half mv squared will give us a constant. So when we plug in the numbers that we were given up here, we are left with this as our quadratic to solve, and really it's x final, so it's the x where it comes to a stop, so it's x final, x final in here. And uh, you will take the positive answer, the, which will be 5.27. So notice we went from a 10 meter distance without friction to a 5.72 meter distance with friction, and that should make sense because friction will also be helping to stop the block so it will not go as far. We also can take this x distance, and we can discuss this more in class, and actually plug it in for 1 half k x squared and calculate how much of the initial energy of the 1 half mv squared, right, that we started with, is now being taken out by the spring and how much of it is being taken out by friction. And I invite you to plug in those numbers. You can 
calculate that, and we'll discuss that further in class.